Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. And we've got Larry on the phone down there in good old Southland. How you doing, Larry? Hey, Stuart. Trying to behave and keep my binoculars <laughs> clear. Yeah, I mean, you better not even go out on your porch. You might get arrested. Uh, I'll tell you what, we get into this because it's getting more and more ridiculous. And they're coming up with more and more restrictive uh concepts. Uh, I want to get into some of those folks. You're watching the New World Order right in front of your face. It's coming up so rapidly. Um, I don't know. Uh, I got a comment from somebody I'd like to read. Um, People are really starting to act freaky over this false flag exercise. Why can't or won't they see the truth? They are proving themselves to be so unrighteous after all. Um, they don't want to see the truth would be my answer to that, right? Larry, I I mean, they're willfully ignorant, willfully ignorant. Got to be. What do you think? Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting. And and actually, you put out a very interesting uh, blog post that says, uh, Basically, as a matter of fact, I Drudge Report, I, d- I did it on my blog, Drudge Report, Anthony Fossey warns Americans could uh, eventually have to carry certificates of immunity to coronavirus to even travel. And yep. you put out a light gate blogger said, how did Tony Fossey become America's dictator and king? And I, I posted that on my blog with a really interesting image, if you ever got to see it. I saw <laughs> that. Yeah, amazing. Uh, we love Fossey, right? We're we're <laughs> yeah. we're gonna bow down. We're gonna lick the black boots he's wearing. Uh, I just I I'm amazed in some ways, and yet it doesn't surprise me at all. In other ways, uh, when Barry Rothman found the uh, stupidity code uh, for America, uh, yeah, I think he's absolutely right. And if it's in the Torah code, uh, <laughs> somebody on high must think. The American people are are in a lot of trouble. Of course, there are the awake ones, and they're watching this, and uh, more and more people are reporting they're kind of getting scared. Well, here's my reply. Remember that the Lord Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and uh, he's going to take care of his own. And... Uh, like the psalm, I think it's in the Psalms where it says a thousand might fall on your left, ten thousand on your right, but the plague will not come nigh unto you. And I don't think we're even at the beginning of this plague because if the first phase doesn't work as the New World Order wanted, then there's something else going on, and on second wave will come in. They're going to use whatever they have to continue the lockdown absolutely destroy all small business, absolutely destroy all the middle class, and you'll end up exactly where the book of Revelation ends up. Very rich, very poor, with the very rich in control of everything. And uh, that's where we're going. Speaking about Barry, uh, I'm going to try and get him on either next week or the week after. I have to depend on how we can work it out. Um, He's got a new Bible called Larry. Uh, Do you have information on that? Because it kind of falls in, I think, with this uh, mysterious COVID-19 that a lot of people are saying probably not a virus. Actually, it's something different. There's something weird about this whole thing. Yeah, I've got a I've got a copy of that, and I was going to mention also. You mentioned Barry Rothman's Torah code that talked about the stupidity virus that was going to be given <laughs> to humans. And uh, by the way, uh, Barry Rothman said that he believed the stupidity virus, if you will, uh, was actually had an alien origin. 
And by and by and what's interesting is the coronavirus. We've had so many people that are saying there's something wrong with this pitcher, and it, it's just something not right. And uh, in his new Torah code, he also says it has an alien origin. Uh, matter of fact, he he made a rep- he at the post uh, first of it. He posted. He said uh, Barry Rothman said alien origin question mark. And he linked in the Nephilim, the fallen, and he says the virus is alien in nature. And uh, what it is, he, he actually ran this virus code uh, titled as Boris Johnson encoded with the Wuhan fever, April the 7th, 2020. And it's got nine uh, 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 matrix points in it. Number mm-hmm. one, Boris Johnson. Number two, Wuhan. Number three, in China. Number four, year 5780, or in other words, 2020. Mm-hmm. Number five, other gods. Number six, God's anger against you will kindle. Number seven, he will destroy you quickly. Number eight, Nephilim. Number nine, fever. So what you've got in this, Stuart, is, is uh, critical identification of the year that it occurs, 5780 or 2020, which is exactly right, Wuhan, Mm -hmm. China, and ties in other gods and Nephilim and a fever, and uh, that's what he says. He says that, uh, Barry says, this virus is alien in nature and ties it back, uh, you know, to, uh, actually he ties it back a little bit to Egypt, or are actually, uh, you know, Mars. I mean, I, I could go into that, but yes. I won't because we don't have time. But what do you think? Well, it sounds very interesting that he also uses the concept of judgment, other gods. Uh, you know, America has basically rejected Christianity when, when uh, Barack Obama said America was not any longer a Christian nation, he actually was telling the truth for once, because <laughs> we're not. Uh, according to the book of Revelation, we are the home of every foul religion and bird and uh, uh, unclean thing, uh, and Christianity has been more or less booted, as, uh, and, and the hatred for the Christians is going to be rising up to a fever level. I got a feeling that the Christians are going to be blamed not only for electing Donald Trump, who is the cause of all this, number one, but number two, a lot of the pastors are beginning to just say, no, we're going to hold service anyway. And uh, we've got other people on the other side of the fence who will rat out anybody. In fact, I, there was a video I saw where this neighbor, uh, maybe it was his sister or mother or neighbor, was just ranting and raving against this guy in the car. Uh, wanted to go out for a ride. Uh, that's the kind of insanity we're going to be watching, and it's going to get worse. Uh, they have bought hook, line, and sinker into the New World Order lie. And uh, I don't know what to tell people. Other than the fact you're in the matrix, you better get out of it while you still got a chance because the door of grace is rapidly, rapidly coming to a close. And as I said on the last show, uh, the people in the military that are going to be involved in this lockdown when it comes, and it's coming very rapidly, um, full martial law, um, they've made their decision. The police departments and the sheriff departments and their deputies have made their decision, and they're going to be held accountable for it. And, um, you know, all adults, and uh, we all have consequences to that which we decide to do. And it, it appears to me that a good sheriff, the sheriff departments, and with few exceptions, are going to go along with all of this lockdown business. And... Um, they're making a big mistake because they're just walking into the new world order. That's what all of this is for. When we talk about a false flag, we're not saying it's not real. We're not saying people aren't dying. We're saying there's an agenda attached to it. It was released on purpose. It's a weaponized virus, if that's what it is. 
And I really question if that's what it is. That's what we're calling it. But I got a feeling this is maybe more than just a virus. It, it appears to be connected really, really tightly with chemtrails, with nanobots, and with 5G technology and frequency poisoning. It somehow um, makes the cells dump toxin so rapidly that it just about kills you right away. Uh, they are finding out, too, that ventilators are dangerous. They're finding out now that oxygen is what people need. They should be put on uh, high doses of oxygen because what this thing does, it sucks the uh, oxygen out of the blood, evidently, and uh, shuts, basically is shutting down the lungs. And that's what happened to Boris Johnson over in England. But they put him on not a ventilator. I read an article where they said they did not even use a ventilator. They used oxygen therapy. And he was fine. And I'm sure they probably used vitamin uh, C, et, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe even that drug that uh, Trump is uh, pushing. You never can find out what the name of it is. I can't pronounce it. So anyway, uh this thing can be defeated. They know it can be defeated, and we get into some of this. Um, I wanted to start with this uh, comment that's coming in, Comet Atlas. They say it's breaking up, and it has a large green coma and tail that's huge. And uh, what is the latest on that? Larry, that you know about, and something about changing course? Yeah, I've been trying to follow this really closely with NOAA and Space Weather uh, and also uh, some other local sites that, that are keeping up with it, and it's really anomalous. I mean, it's hardly a, even an explanation for what it's doing. It appears to be moving or, or was moving towards the sun, and it had actually dimmed a little, and now it's brightening up, and uh, they say possibly it's trying to break up, and I sent you images of that, and yes. also uh, changing course. Uh, the trajectory is changing, so they really don't know. They, they feel like it's moving closer into the orbit of Mars now, and uh, which could mean they could put it on a path towards Earth if it changed. So they're watching that closely. I, it really reminded me so much of this experience I had. I was taken into space by the Lord, and I was mm -hmm. shown uh, something that that was going through space, dark space, and it was uh, two or three, it looked like, uh, objects close together, and I called them rocks in space. I don't really know exactly what they were. could have been a comet. could have been a comet broke up. I, I don't know, but suddenly... Something that I cannot explain turned them on another course, and they began to move in a direction, and I saw Earth way off. So I don't know whether I can link it with what this comet Atlas, but, you know, you mentioned something really interesting. Uh, just the, the, the title, Comet Atlas, Atlas is known to hold up the world or try yes. to support the world, and uh, I find it interesting, Stuart, that uh, this comet, which is, Really, the, it could be a pale horse, if you will, or or green, chloros. Yes. It come. It, this comet really popped on the scene at the same time coronavirus popped on the scene, and there's got to be some type of connection. Uh, it could be a judgment cycle that we've entered uh, with all of it. Yeah. You still there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I just heard a loud click. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh. I think there is there's something to this, and uh, if it did come, I'm, I'm just saying it probably won't because I went on and saw where they are putting the trajectory. Maybe that will change. It's quite a ways from Earth. However, let's say this thing did change its direction a little bit and did come much closer to Earth, not a, not a comet that would hit it, but would come fairly close. It's... It's a green uh, tail. It's a green uh, coma. It, it's, what did they say? Almost half the size of the sun. 
And what's interesting about it is uh, in uh, the prophecies of Phoenix rising, Noah's, the near do well Charmin lady, said that there would be a green haze that would come all the way down to the surface. And I'm just wondering, uh, could this thing change course, or could we enter sometime, not necessarily now, uh, a, a tail of radiation that turns everything green for a while, green haze? Now, what's interesting about that? is when I was on the Art Bell Show long ago, uh, a, a fellow who is a believer in Islam called in and mentioned that they have a prophecy of a smoke. He didn't say what color the smoke was. He just said they have a prophecy of a smoke that comes down and envelopes the earth. So this is going to get interesting. And I also, because... In, in the book of Revelation, not Revelation, but Isaiah, I believe it is, that uh, it says that the, the government of the world basically will rest upon the shoulders of the Lord. Well, Atlas held up the world. So are we watching a kind of connection here in code? between the Lord returning and holding up the government after he does in, of course, the New World Order, boys and girls, they're in for a real shock, but uh, you can't tell them anything. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And uh, what's it? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say what's interesting, too, when you got to mentioning that, do you remember a number of years ago they came out with a movie series that really got blacklisted almost. It was called Atlas Shrugs. That yes. was the name of it. Atlas Shrugs. And I watched the I watched the three episodes of that Atlas Shrugs and that really was an expose of the New World Order taking over the world and its industry and its militaries and its police forces and literally putting everybody else out of work. Are we seeing Atlas Shrugs at the same time? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. When we get into this a little further, uh, this is deliberate and willful on the part of the rich men of the earth. No question about it. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about an arrival. Well, there will be an arrival that everybody will see, but they're, they're, these uh, fallen angels have been in concert with uh, our military and world leaders for quite some time. Uh, there's no question about it. Oh, too many insider reports are coming out. And uh, I think even Stan Deo has mentioned that, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of working with them in a way. And uh, uh, people just are not aware of it. Now, I want to tie back into something with Comet Atlas, with Comet Ison. Remember Comet Ison? I, Sun closest to the earth on December 26, 2013. So we're in the seventh year. Isn't that interesting? But if you really looked at Ison, uh, it kissed the sun. Uh, you may remember, Larry, that the scientists all said that Comet Ison was going to be disintegrated and would be destroyed by the sun. In other words, it would fall into the sun and be destroyed, but it didn't. What I, Sun, did was kiss the sun, come around the other side, it broke up, and uh, then sort of vanished into outer space after it passed uh, Earth. So the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, why did I, Sun, kiss the sun? seven years ago is is god trying to point out that we should be really looking at psalm 2 because what does psalm 2 say kiss the sun you rich men you rulers you kings kiss the sun 
lest the Lord be angry at you for a little and you be destroyed, basically. Go read Psalm 2. And Psalm 2 is all about Daniel's 70th week. That's when Psalm 2's apex takes place. That's when the kings and the rulers of the earth rise up to get rid of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. They want to get rid of them. They don't even want that mentioned. Uh, so what you're watching is very, very interesting when you start tying past things to pre uh, cosmic signs to present cosmic signs. So anyway, just something, another thing that kind of adds into the thing that we are so, so close to all of this. Um, what else do you have, Larry, on the cosmic sign? Anything at all? I know we get, we well, have a go, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to mention uh, that that movie you mentioned earlier, Greenland. Uh, yes, that's actually a comet disaster movie uh, about a uh, comet that breaks up and basically damages Earth too during the process, and it's uh, with that uh, Gerard Butler. Uh, and it, what's interesting is the fact that, uh, you know, they're reporting, uh, you know, Q-Alert came out first with it, but I found and verified it and vetted it that it's an asteroid trailer. Greenland has been removed everywhere. In other words, I mean, suddenly a really high-class film, and I saw I talked to someone this evening that said he saw the trailer, and he said it's, it's unbelievable. He got a copy of the trailer. You know how sometimes you can get a link and record yeah. it. And and anyway, uh, but they've almost you know removed them everywhere, and globally. But what? Why would you suddenly remove a movie with a theme to it like that? And and that's why there's a number of people suspicious, thinking that possibly uh, that film was going to be a warning, and this is could be why this coronavirus is being used also to prepare for. Uh, some incoming of some kind shortly. And by the way, uh, I, you know, I know we don't listen to a whole lot of sorts of fall, but I have to say, uh, you know, usually there's a grain of truth with a whole lot of hoopla built around it with sorts of fall. But <laughs> yeah. what, what's interesting is the headline, and I sent you a copy of it, I think. Uh, she's talking about some secret spacecraft called the Black Star spacecraft and Trump mm -hmm. Space Force and and on a mission and tying it into the mysterious objects flying near the moon. And, you know, we talked about that on the last program, and I actually posted video of that, and it's very, very telling. And basically uh, she's talking about coronavirus and the incoming of some type or uh, preparations on, even on the moon for that. Now, I know that sounds way far out, but... Stuart, it seems like something's really going on, and it's not all on planet Earth. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely coming into something that the American people and the people of the world, really, who have been poo-pooing most of this, uh, are going to have a very rude awakening of uh, the supernatural, of the paranormal, uh, which they go to movies to watch but don't believe any of it. Uh, it's coming to a town near you, and it's coming to a door near you probably as well. And uh, we're, we're under judgment. And there's uh, more than one prophecy. Larry, you may remember this, where they said uh, something about an event, that when the event occurred, that was the beginning of all the troubles. And they said the event was a fiery event now I don't know what you would call a fiery event however it might be a meteor storm remember that uh, Stan Dale saw in one of his visions that there was a meteor storm over the west coast and then the uh, all the volcanoes went off remember well, I remember that, Stuart. I remember it well, and I think Stan Dale, you know, who studied quite a bit of Daniel in the end times, seemed to think, I believe, that when that happened, 
it begins is what he was told, and he believes yep. that was the tribulation that begun when that happens. And what I tell you, what it made me reminded me of uh, of an old book that I pulled out today to reread and look at a little bit better. Evil fire made to burn. Yes, a story by Gary Gary Vay. Uh, it says a true account of the world's greatest cover up. And uh, well, I just read it here. He said uh, he quotes. He says. The chamber of the Lord also made to remain in the place, but the sky made to open up to the evil fire and made to burn. But because of the blind prophets and their friend of the enemy, rise up to close the aperture in the sky to heal the nation. But he basically says that there's there's rock writing or petroglyphs all around the earth in, in different nations that say the very same thing that talk about an evil fire at, at towards the end that will ca- fall from the sky. And uh, d- d- that also reminds me, wasn't there a prophecy, hopey maybe, of, of gourds falling on fire? Yes. Yeah. And I guess most of them think that's probably nuclear bombs. However, we don't really know that. They They also have the prophecy of the blue Katrina and the red Katrina. And nobody really knows what those are. And then you've got, uh, uh, what's his name, who wrote Earth Under Fire, Paul LaViolette, Dr. Paul LaViolette, Earth Under Fire, uh, who talks about how the core of the Milky Way explodes periodically. And when it does, it sends these huge cosmic shock waves. And he was on a show over there in England. And they, uh, he was talking about that, and they mentioned that they had been told by a, probably a space pilot, uh, you know, part of Trump's now uh, space fleet, or Starship Trooper type people, and that um, they could see the effects of the shockwave coming, but it hasn't reached here yet. But we do have the preliminaries. Mike... Uh, from around the world did a whole series about that with Paul Begley about the cosmic shock waves coming through those would be the preliminary early ripples now these shock waves distort time and space and uh, it appears and I'm as guilty of it but I'm 80 years old plus now uh, it appears to me that time is speeding up in other words, time is being compressed, and Celeste, uh, in her uh, interview, I think, with, uh, who was that? Can't remember. Steve, who Steve she Quayle? Interviewed. Uh, it might have been Steve Quayle or uh, Hagman or somebody like that. But anyway, she said that uh, she felt that it was the, the Lord, the Creator, who actually, getting into quantum physics, compresses time so in other words it speeds up we're not aware of it we wouldn't see it necessarily on our clocks but how you find out about it is it seems like it takes far longer to do a simple task and I've gotten reports from people all over about that sort of thing they're getting uh, you know what took them an hour to do now takes them three hours to do well, the only reason that would occur is time is speeding up. And so it takes three hours of the speeding up of hours. And remember what the Bible did say, that um, time would be shortened. And it would be shortened by a third. I always thought that probably some space object, big space object, comes by the Earth and speeds up the rotation so that we go a, a third. It, it says it, uh, the night is a third less, the days are a third less, the stars give off one third less light, etc., etc. Well, there's a number of ways you can do that, but when you relate it back to the time will be shortened to save the elect, uh, that's kind of interesting wording, because it could be not that at all, but rather time being compressed. So it literally is speeding up, and it will continue to speed up until we lose a third of a normal day. So our normal day would be eight hours at a time. 
and yeah. et cetera, and a night would be eight hours. So it's weird. I think we're coming into a lot of weird, weird stuff. That's what I think. Yeah, and, and, and that kind of brings back to me memory of, you know, I saw uh, Red Elk's original uh, Native American uh report you know of the first video he did but then you also did a video with him and i didn't he say something to the effect that the talking about signs he said whenever we see the sky turn red it's too late yep by the time the sky turns blood red it's it, you're you're done and that is also in other native american prophecies that the sky will turn bright red and by the when that happens it's all over uh you know the Lord has given already a, a, a delay, at least a delay from our perspective. To his perspective, there is no delay, but from ours, it seems like there has been a delay. And even if you get into the parable of the sower, the Lord delayeth his coming. Uh, and, and the parable of the virgins, etc., etc., that sort of thing. Uh, where the Lord delays. Uh, you'll find it, I think it's in uh, Habakkuk. The vision will come. It will tarry, but wait for it, because it will come. So in other words, there is a delay from the human perspective that the Lord evidently not going to return, at least that's the way it appears. <laughs> and, but it's only from our perspective. But now we're getting a lot of these cosmic signs, and they're coming with more and more rapidity, and they're more and more coded. In other words, they're hidden from humanity that doesn't know anything about how the Lord works. Uh, we had just had one on the 4th and the 3rd about the Pleiades and um, the comet. And, and whatnot. All of these are actually cosmic signs. And then we had the brightest supermoon, Passover supermoon. That's another sign. Even the rabbis are saying this is a big, big sign. And uh, the world at large just laughs at all this. They mock this because they, they haven't studied to show themselves approved. They have no clue as to what's really coming. And, and maybe a good thing, because if they're panicked over this uh, COVID-19, this is nothing, folks. This is absolutely nothing, nothing at all compared with what's coming. So if they're panicked now and they're fearful now, uh, wait until just a few years from now. They're really going to be panicked. Even the Book of the Colburn told us that the, the signs we're seeing now are signs of the approach of the destroyer. Um, anyway, what do you think, Larry? <laughs> well, I, I think you're right on. And by the way, I, if people haven't seen uh, some of the images of this latest, uh, I believe it was April the 5th, solar flare, a big one off the backside of the sun towards that object, uh, and where you can clearly see in the, the instance of the flare, the sun and then this object off to what I call the left side of it, just a little bit, and behind the sun, it's yep. so clear, Stuart, what that really is. And by the way, I was looking again at this book by Olaf Page, the uh, Frenchman, uh, the coder, and he calls it Typhon, the Reaper of Worlds. And very, yep. very telling. Uh, matter of fact, in it, he said, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, he said, uh, you know, he uses a lot of, he talks about the seven bold judgments of Revelation 8. And he also ties in, uh, besides the book of Revelation, uh, what he called uh, historical data of something called Typhon. And said that, uh, he said, Typhon moved in an elliptical orbit around the sun that took approximately 5,000 125 years when uh, Manuel Velikovsky proposed the idea of another deluge hitting the Earth in the 1950s. Most astronomers mocked his theories as crackpot. However, when Shoemaker-Levy comet hit Jupiter in July 1994, scientists changed their minds and now consider the possibility that a space object like Typhon may visit the Earth again. And he talks about that in his book. He calls it Destroyer of Worlds. Now, what's odd, Stuart, 
is the you know we've got all that going on, and a friend of mine, a pastor that came up and met with me, and you know we've been talking about and sharing, Stuart, about all of these odd demonic and and uh, manifestations of creatures that are really weird. Uh, you know we talked about that in the last show actually, and yep. you know the the, the dog like creatures or cow upright coyotes, et cetera, et cetera, and all of this. Yes. And, I, you know, I told you there's been uh, just an outbreak all, worldwide, really, of this stuff, and especially in America, where it seems the veil is really, really thin. Now, uh, Ray Andrews, a friend of mine from Dallas-Fort Worth, he's a pastor there. Uh, he heard us on the last show talk about this, bring it up and talk about it, and he went out and was driving around, as you said, some people are not supposed to do, but he was driving around and praying <laughs> about what we talked about, and the Lord began to deal with him, he said, and, sh- and showed him this creature, Anubis. It's an Anubis creature, and he said that uh, this this thing is, you know, he said historically, biblically, uh, you know, and historically it, it showed up in Egypt, and he said it also will be exhibited in Babylon under divine judgment. He said the Lord had dealt with him about this, and he called it a jackal. He said the Lord's word seems to defer it to be a jackal of some sort, a demonic jackal. And he says the Lord also, he believed, and I may not have all this exactly right. I'm trying to do it by memory. But he said he was told also it will get worse. What do you think? Yeah, because we're getting all these reports of dog man, wolf man, coyote man, whatever, walking upright. Uh, and they are increasing all over the world uh, as the veil does thin. So I looked it up. Anubis is uh, Egyptian and a Greek name of the god of death, god of death, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries, tombs, and the underworld. So then you could say, why are they increasing now? Well, (laughs) the Lord is allowing all this, trying to warn humanity, you're facing death. You're facing uh, total destruction. And they're they're deaf to it, Larry. They don't, they're just going along. I mean, I've got family members. It's just like. Well, what in the world are you talking about? You're nuts. You're a tinfoil hat idiot. That's their basic attitude. They don't say that, but that's what they mean. You know, they're rolling their eyes. And all of these things are beginning to happen, like the UFO. Uh, Whenever you have a big UFO flap, which we are having in 2020 and had one in 2019, it's all about Israel. When Israel... Uh, is going to about go into something that's going to not only affect Israel, but also the whole world, because Israel is a time clock for planet Earth. That's why the rebirth of Israel in 1948 was so important. And what did Jesus say? A generation. A generation would pass and all would be fulfilled. And so here we are, most scholars evidently think a generation basically is 70 years, because 70 is such a huge number in the Bible. And uh, here we are, we're in the 71st, 72nd year, depending on where you look at it. Well, the Lord did say in several places, uh, after 70 years, uh, so here we go, and uh, it, it's too bad that people just don't pay any attention to this stuff. Uh, but you, when you were talking about Typhon, uh, it reminded me of the movie Armageddon, where they had the fiery event. Remember, they were out on a spaceship, uh, on a space station, in the opening scenes of that movie. And one of the guys was out on a spacewalk, or two of them were out there, and all of a sudden, they got ripped to pieces by these uh, by a, a meteor shower. And then the next scene you see is they're hitting all parts of the planet. And it's it's kind of interesting because of this fiery event. So I don't know. Here's some uh, headlines that are interesting. If you don't think we're in a lockdown, and if you don't think this is an attack upon Christianity. 
Here, here's just a few headlines. Church members get $500 tickets for sitting in their vehicles with their windows closed during radio service in a church parking lot. All about trying to save lives, said the communist mayor. These people are communists. This is a communist coup. Uh, the uh, governor of Michigan, you can't even go across the street. Your papers, please. It's such a fake, and the people of America are falling for it. Uh, here's some more headlines. The U.N. is not your friend. COVID-19 is depopulation, rewilding, and climate reset. It's also an economic reset, folks. This is what this is all about. Have you ever heard of this one? UN 75, People's Declaration. The UN 2020 campaign is working to develop a civil society declaration and plan of action to be adopted at the UN 75 People's Forum for the future we want, the UN we need. Guess what that is? Full Communism. They're taking over America using this coronavirus as the excuse. And if you don't believe it, I'll read you a few other headlines. They're coming right out in the open. They're telling you what they're going to do. And what are the American people doing? Twiddling their thumbs, bowing down, licking the black boots. It's amazing. Anyway, this meeting is to take place tentatively planned for May 14th, Israel's birthday. Isn't that interesting, 2020? Uh, your inputs will inform the content of the declaration and the advocacy group going forward. U.N. member states also negotiate the intergovernmental U.N. 75 political declaration to be completed by June and adopted by the heads of state at the UN 75 Leaders Summit, September 19, 2020. Why aren't people paying any attention to this? I don't understand this, Larry. You send your sons and daughters off to war to get maimed, killed, tortured, to fight communism and to protect the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. What are the American people doing right now with their Bill of Rights shredded? Well, I'll tell you what they've done. They've betrayed their own sons and daughters, husbands and wives, and the grandparents and all those who died in World War I, World War II, Vietnam, etc., etc. You have betrayed all of them. You're betrayers. What do you think God's going to do? to betrayers. I don't want to even think about what God's going to do to the American people. I've warned you for 30 years that this was coming. You're going to get nailed. And I don't mean lightly. This thing is going to be horrendous. And you just watch. Let me read you some of the things. Um, don't forget either that May 1st, it's May Day, celebrations of the communists, International Workers' Day by the socialists and communists. Would this be their goal for America by May 1st, that they have toppled the United States? And there's so little resistance. Here's one from a sheriff who said, this is not Nazi Germany and it's not Soviet Russia and I'm not going to enforce these laws. Okay. Um... Here's another one, Australia using ankle bracelets to monitor quarantine dodgers. Uh, lockdown message, you have no rights. Time to call their bluff. Time to say we'd rather be sick and lose our freedoms, our livelihoods, and our human dignity. A little bit too late, folks. Here's what the uh, protocols of the elders of Sion said. And I've read you that a long time ago on this program. I've read you the whole thing. But here's part of it. 
We have regulated everything in their lives as is done by wise parents who desire to train children in the cause of duty and submission for the peoples of the world in regard to the secrets of our polity are ever only children under age precisely as are also their governments. So what they've said, they've regulated everything in their lives. Well, what are they doing? You can't go to the grocery store without without permission. You can't walk across the street. We'll arrest you if you do. Man walking his dog in a park, find $880. Everyone in Miami Beach must wear masks. Masks, by the, by the way, are absolutely useless. It's nothing to do with this. Paris burns outdoor exercise during daylight hours. Stores cordon off aisles containing items deemed not essential. A director of WHO says police may break into your homes and take away anyone they deem infected. Kumo urges the New York Police Department to be more aggressive in breaking up funerals, large gatherings, and people playing frisbee in the park. Raises fines to $1,000 for people who flout social distancing rooms. Uh, in Pennsylvania, a, a young woman was fined $200 for going for a drive, violating a governor's stay-at-home order. Church services are being canceled. Uh, in Colorado, a father is handcuffed for playing softball with his daughter in the park. Um, what has gone wrong, Larry, with the people? Well, What's I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> but I still say, Stuart, that you're going to depend where you live how this plays out because, uh, oddly enough, you know, L.A. Marzulli had him and his wife had went back to California. You mentioned something about Malibu Beach, I think, or something. Yeah, that was the area he was he was trying to rebuild his home, get his foundation ready to rebuild out there. And when coronavirus hit, if you'll remember, they were finding people a thousand dollars that went outside, and still are, I suppose. But Marzulli, he's back in Oklahoma. Because in Oklahoma, the woman that was screaming because somebody was took a drive in a car, well, she would really scream at all the people driving by with their fishing boats and trailers going to the lakes and rivers here. Because in Oklahoma, there's a lot more freedom of movement. And, uh, you know, I don't sit on my porch. I, I walk my dog. I walk. And I walk a lot. But... Uh, you know, I think it's going to be where you are. Most of the sheriffs around where I live uh, are not going to go along. I mean, they're simply not. And they've already made statements and, uh, you know, uh, public statements that they're against uh, any violations of, uh, you know, Constitution. So whether that will lead to a civil war, I don't know, Stuart. But it's odd that a lot of the military movements that we're seeing in certain parts of the country, and by the way, I sent you a video of UN vehicles going through Texas, uh, you know, on train tr cars, and, yep. and all of that seems to be hidden or removed on the Internet. Yeah, but they don't want people to know what's really happening. Here's another headline, Medical Tyranny. NIH, which is, I believe, the National Institute of Health, says all Americans, all Americans, must carry medical ID cards to leave home or to work or to shop. <laughs> that's yeah, that's pretty much the mark of the beast. Go that's, ahead, Larry. Uh, that's, that's Fossey's group, I think. Yep. Uh, he's horrible. That's my opinion. I think he's uh, he's uh, big friends with Bill Gates. In fact, um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, when you want something, you can never find it. But uh, this thing well, while is you, while uh, you're hunting, yeah. While you're hunting yeah, for that, ahead. Stuart. Uh, I was going to, uh, Dr. Fossey was on with uh, Harris Faulkner, and I posted that today on my blog, uh, actually with the Outnumbered show on Fox News, 
and he slammed Fox News as they attempted to talk lesser coronavirus deaths than his models had predicted. He slammed uh, them, even asking them about why the models were so far out of bounds to what we're really seeing, and he said, this is nothing your 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 attempts to uh, talk about the models and how much lesser uh, deaths are occurring, he says, is nothing but a political distraction. Well, they had a doctor on um, one of the ladies' shows there on Fox News, and she asked him about, you know, this new medicine that Trump is pushing, and he said that is dangerous. That's one of the most dangerous drugs out there doesn't work anyway. It's absolutely useless. It's all just baloney. And on and on and on he went. A paid liar, obviously. Doctors are reporting all over the place how successful they are using that. Hey, uh, Stuart. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to, Huckabee came out after he, after that came out, and uh, Huckabee said uh, there may be calling it a coronavirus epidemic, but he said the biggest epidemic in America right now is liars. <laughs> yeah, they lie through their teeth all the time now. Uh, let's see. Uh, they, they, all the headlines on Drudge are basically scare headlines. And uh, let's see if I can. Uh, Michigan bans travel between residences, so you can't even cross the street. Uh, Boston suburb threatens $100 fine to anyone walking in the wrong direction, even. Prisoners <laughs> riots as tensions rise. Inmates to take over cell block in Kansas. Europe close to herd immunity. You know, the word herd is a term for cattle. You have a herd of cattle. And now they're, they're more or less calling us cattle, which is... Uh, Exactly what the Illuminati calls us. We're just cattle. Uh, it's amazing, and the people don't even no, realize what? that. <laughs> Go ahead. What, what what I was actually laughing at, Stuart, was when you said they were, uh, you know, going after people that were walking in the wrong direction. And the reason I was laughing is the way they would talk, you're going in the wrong direction if you're going in any direction. <laughs> yes. I, I put on, when I up up the show... I, I said, you know, would the people actually go out and do it? And I believe they probably would. If Fossey or whatever his name is said, go outside at 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon, turn around five times, go back into your house, then come back out and do it five times, would the American people do it? If he said to well, do it, I bet you they would. Yeah, I think that they would, Stuart. And by the way, uh, D. Rowe from Florida sent me a really good notice she said that uh, the government, for the last few weeks, over and over and over and over, has just continued on people to wash their hands. And she said that because she follows all government's advice, she said, my hands are really, really clean, but my body needs some help because they haven't told me to take a shower or a bath in weeks. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Humanity is showing how insane it really is. And I think that's why the Lord is about done with us. Um, you know, we've been talking about repentance. There is no genuine repentance in the United States. It doesn't exist. It's a dirty word to a totally apostate, lost, uh, hell-bound church. And I've written a number of books about that, one called The Poor Lost Christian, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then the books on frequency, uh, dark light. I've done a number of videos on it. Uh, people have redacted almost everything that Jesus Christ said, and they've opted for a fake. Well, the Lord has given the warnings, and nobody's paying any attention. Now, unfortunately, we don't know when the church is going to leave. There's a lot of argument. Is it uh, at trib? Is it mid trib? Is it slightly in the trib? Is there no rapture at all? It depends on who you want to believe. I believe what the Bible says, and uh, I think people should get ready because this can happen anytime now. We're coming up on first fruits, which is uh, barley harvest. 
uh, here on uh, Saturday, Friday night, actually, as far as Israel's concerned, Saturday over here, and then the next time we got to watch is Pentecost, and then the next time is uh, Tu B'Av uh, as a possible time. But remember what the Book of Enoch said, our times are off. We really don't know exactly how far off they really are. So it's a, it's a kind of a watch game, like Jesus said. What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Well, what are you supposed to watch for? The events listed in prophecy. Almost all of them are now fulfilled. There's a few left, but not very many. And we don't even know if those that are left actually are tied in any way, shape, or manner to the rapture of the church. They may be, they may not be. And uh, I just don't argue with it anymore because the Lord knows when he's going to come back for his own. And if he does something, we're in a world of hurt. <laughs> so anyway, what else you got, Larry, before we close down? Yeah, I was just going to mention you also did a uh, a blog post recently, uh, the church age almost over, or another year or two. And uh, what's your opinion on that? You've studied that really, really closely. Uh, I know we're in the season but are we really close? I think we are. I think there's too many signs, and we got that 411 comet crossing in the heavens. So 411 is a very huge, huge date for uh, for the Lord, or he would never have done what he did. Then we had the star sign back in uh, uh, 2017. And that star sign was very legitimate. And what made it legitimate was the conception comet. Never in the history that they they went in and looked. That comet has never been there and will never be there again. But just as Jupiter entered the womb of Mary, or the Virgin, here comes the conception comet. Bang, conception takes place and it leaves. And... Um, that was three years ago. Three is a big, big number to the Lord. It's a resurrection number. And here we are three years later in 2020. So yeah, any time during this year could be very – I think it comes as a surprise, Larry. I don't think anybody's going to recognize it when it hits. It's just going to oh, be by the way, Stuart, yeah, by yeah. the way, you, you, you had asked me – if that uh, the Sanhedrin had, had actually performed that uh, sacrifice, and yes. my answer, I found out, I found out today from Breaking Israel News that Netanyahu had not given them an answer, so they went through that uh, the moment when it should have been done possibly, and he's still putting them off, and they've gone, they're they're appealing that again and uh, demanding that he allow them to go ahead and make that sacrifice. So really almost uh, any time frame here, we could see that begin to happen over in Israel. Yep. Uh, one of the key signs for the end of days is the rising of the Sanhedrin. And they're, they're, they're rising. They have everything ready. They can go up on the Temple Mount any time in an instant. Uh, I believe they probably have David's tabernacle. And they can set that up, and it doesn't have to be a temple. A tabernacle will work. So here we are. We wait. We watch, just as the Lord said. But uh, this can come down any time at all now. We are so close to this being done. And I noticed ten rabbis had already petitioned not Yahoo to get with it. <laughs> so here we go, <laughs> folks. Anyway, anything else, Larry? Last word. I just don't think I would unbelt my unbelt my seat buckle. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, it just we could wake up at any time with lots of changes. Yeah, I think we will. I think when this thing came in in communist Russia, it came in almost overnight. They went to bed one day, they got up the next, and everything was different. Watch out for Passover and the eleventh, uh, and also later through April and early May. May 1st, um, you know, the Communist May Day. So anyway, folks, here we are, watching and waiting. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Thank you, Larry, for coming on. And uh, this is a heads up for everybody because America is in deep, deep trouble. 
and the American people have allowed it to be so. Anyway, good night. Take care.